What's up, Glassy Gang? It's your boy Glassy, and we're back again with some more Halo Infinite news, and it's not necessarily uh, good news. But before we get into the video, go ahead and give this video a like because we want the algorithm to work with us. We've got some good videos, and you know what? Some pretty good stuff you might want to check out. So go ahead and check out the channel after the video as well. And with that being said, let's hop right into it. <music> Halo Infinite is seriously struggling to fulfill its live service promise. There was a lot of hype at Halo Infinite's launch, but it's been struggling to maintain interest and plans drift away as other problems deepen. Fans have been waiting for Halo Infinite since mid-2018, and at the end of 2021, it finally released. It took longer than expected due to a year-long delay out of 2020, but some early multiplayer tests and final campaign footage kept people excited. So, Halo Infinite's free-to-play multiplayer released in November 2021, and the campaign followed in December. With the new pricing model and crossplay for Halo's prolific multiplayer suite, it seemed like the series revival that fans were waiting for. However, the honeymoon period was short-lived and the campaign treated the players well enough that it felt like it was a stepping stone on the way to its next major story arc. The fact that it's still missing Halo's iconic campaign co-op has not set well with many fans, and me included because I got some friends I want to play with, yet that pales next to the controversy surrounding the multiplayer, which is despicable is a nice way of putting it. Despite Halo Infinite's long lead up to a release, the uh, mountain of issues were quickly raised about the free game and 343 Industries has been slow to rectify. While Halo Infinite was marketed as Halo's first attempt at a modern live in-service game, the amount of service it still needs make prospects look a little bit weaker. And so what do we mean by that? We mean the live service model has not worked for Halo Infinite. The biggest problems plaguing Halo Infinite's live service model is that it hasn't been providing much. Major updates come maybe once or twice a month, if that, and the seasons of themed content last much longer than those of other games. Season 1 is still ongoing more than three months after launch, with Season 2 not expected until May-ish. So far, 343 Industries has added traditional playlists and rotated them through a few special events, but some work has also gone into improving the progression system, but neither the progression nor playlists have, you know, placated the players. I've been level 100 for, I don't know, two months now, and I still have what? We have till, what, two more months, maybe a month and a half before we can even move forward? No, it's, it's just not gonna work out. Halo Infinite is starting off on the wrong side of the foot with limited multiplayer modes, customization, and experience uh, progression system system that was panned. Even the microtransactions that tied into these systems were designed in an unappealing way. Fixes have been coming slowly, but as promised, features are still nowhere in sight. There was even expected to be a proper roadmap a few months into season one, but that never materialized. Halo Infinite's broken promises are building up, and now that campaign co-op's aiming for a mid-season two release, it feels like Infinite had launched way too soon. Almost seems like they kind of pulled a cyberpunk, but at least cyberpunk got fixed. Negativity toward the brand may be in an all-time high thanks to the new Halo show. Despite a being Xbox's mascot franchise, Halo Infinite is rapidly losing players and Twitch viewers. At one point in March, players even noticed a spike in the Master Chief Collection's Steam numbers that surpassed Halo Infinite, which honestly, I might even go back to. I've been thinking about it. That didn't last long, but the newer free-to-play title is still averaging only around 10,000 Steam players and 1,000 Twitch viewers outside of special events. Forbes recently reported that Halo Infinite is dangerously close to being bumped out of the top 10 most played games on Xbox, with many other live service shooters ahead of it. With this in mind, 343 industries needs to make a concentrated effort to fix Halo Infinite's issues as soon as possible and then start season two with a bang. Experience gain and the goals that reward experience need a full revision and allowing more flexibility and armor customization would improve some things. And a preference-based playlist system similar to Halo 5 would do Halo Infinite a lot of good. Even setting the multiplayer infrastructure aside, a common online desync issue plaguing matches must be resolved. Halo Infinite still has potential, but if 343 and Microsoft are too slow to turn it around, they may not be anyone left to enjoy this latest Halo game. With that being said, I appreciate you making it to the end of the video. If you could leave this video a like, leave a comment, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and get subscribed because we want this algorithm to work for us. You know, we got some good content on here. I'm going to bring it to a lot wider audience. Anyway, I love you guys. We make content twice a week on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And with that being said, I'll see you next time.